Hi there, it is great to have you back in the course again. So now we jump into the topic of cyclists and their needs. The second most important element in active transport after walking is cycling. Just like walking, cycling encourages public health as there is physical movement and cycling is a great exercise. And let's put it right at the beginning. Many people think that weather is unfavorable for cycling, but weather is not a reason for not cycling. It is more to do with clothing and the attitude towards cycling. So encouraging cycling goes more beyond providing a bicycle path or a bicycle lane. We will discuss the factors that encourage cycling in the following sections of this video. And before we get into the main content, there are a few terms we uh, will be using or you may read in the reading material and I would like to clarify some of these terms. So a bicycle lane is something that is uh, demarcated and uh, but not physically segregated from the other traffic, be it motorized traffic uh, or pedestrian traffic. And a bicycle path is a dedicated way for bicycle users and that is physically segregated and cyclists have their clear right of way on a bicycle path. And similarly, when we talk about bicycle uh, parking, we mean parking facilities specially designed to lock the bicycles. This does not include trees, signposts or street furniture, but rather facilities designed for uh, bicycle parking. Though some cyclists do lock their bicycles to trees, signs and signposts of street furniture, but this is not our intention. And if we are talking cyclists or bicycles in these videos, we generally mean bicycles and those that are human powered. There is an increasing trend of electric bicycles or e-bikes and the design and policy characters, uh, characteristics we deal in the coming sections also apply to e-bikes. And since we are talking about e-bikes, let me also clarify the difference we make between e-bikes and pedelecs. Pedelecs are electric assisted bikes. Uh, this means that the electric motor uh, does not support the rider after a certain speed. Uh, in Europe, it is 25 kilometers per hour. And e-bikes or electric bikes are the ones that support the rider at all times. In many cases, e-bikes also come with a throttle or an accelerator, whereby the rider does not need to pedal. E-bikes can move at higher speeds than pedelecs, and in many EU countries, e-bikes need a number plate, uh, i.e. they have to be registered. So when we are talking electric bikes in our next uh, upcoming slides, we actually mean the pedelecs. So now we have the main terms clarified. Let's get into the needs of cyclists. So as bicycle is powered by muscles, uh, the main need for a cyclist is to expend as less energy as possible while reaching the destination. So our design needs to reflect this requirement. And cycling is an act of balancing and we need to make sure that the balance is not lost uh, due to obstructions or disturbances from other vehicles. In such cases, additional space is required by the cyclist to maintain the balance. And as a wheeled vehicle, bicyclists will also need to some uh, need some time to react uh, to prevent a collision. So we need to consider that in our plans. Cyclists also prefer a smooth surface as there is hardly any suspension on uh, on the regular commuting bicycles. And protection from wind uh, or rain and sun is appreciated by cyclists. And cyclists also like to ride side by side when it is possible, uh, as it's a social activity. And just like driving a car, cyclists need attention on the route and also clear indications on where to go. The preferences we just talked about can be condensed into five main needs of cyclists. 
as mentioned in the Cycling Inclusive Policy Development Handbook, which is developed by the GIZ and various international cycling experts. And a link for this resource is available in the reading list uh, for this section of the course. So the five main needs are coherent or continuous routes, direct routes, safe routes, comfortable routes, and attractive routes. And let's see what each of these means in the next part. Coherent routes mean that the entire bicycle lanes or paths form a network that is connected. Being connected means that a cyclist can switch from one route to the other seamlessly. Imagine you just biked on a high quality bike path or a lane and then at the end of the lane you are left with no lane or a path. Then it becomes a confusion uh, to the cyclist and thereby it becomes a confused route rather than a coherent or a connected route. Coherent, coherence also means that the material and the quality of the surface does not deteriorate throughout the journey. This gives the cyclists a chance to switch routes easily if there is another possible connection. Similarly, wayfinding and signage also need to be coherent. That is, signs at the same level all along the route and clear signage showing how long to go and which direction to take. Direct routes. So one of the reasons why Netherlands or Copenhagen have such high cycling rates is that the cyclists, cyclists enjoy a direct route to their destination. Car users often need to take a longer route and door to door when compared to a bicyclist. This increases the appeal to bicycle and of course when the other needs are also met. And cyclists love to have a short trip and it, it's common with all of us and uh, avoid detours. But explicitly making cars take the longer route reduces the appeal for using the car and also deters people from getting a car but rather get a bicycle. Urban planners and transport planners play, play a crucial role here uh, because with clever design it is possible to create uh, bicycle only shortcuts through alleys and lanes that are not used by cars. Another possibility is to create a one-way street for motorized traffic but the same street can be used both ways uh, by a bicycle. It is also a general practice in many European cities that the city centre is accessible only by pedestrians and cyclists while car users have to park elsewhere and walk to the city centre or providing parking in the city centre at a very high price so that uh, they, they are deterred naturally from pricing to, uh, to drive to the city centre. Also, bicyclists enjoy a free parking facility in most of the city centres in EU cities as uh, there are designated parking options for bicycles. And our goal with direct routes is to shorten the travel time for cyclists when compared to that of motorized modes. Safety is also a major concern for bicyclists, just like pedestrians. Cyclists are very vulnerable uh, in the event of collision and note that cyclists do not have a protective shell around them or have airbags or bumpers like, uh, like motorized uh, modes, especially cars. And safety also applies to the bicycles itself, the vehicle. A key factor in reducing the conflict between uh, the cyclists and motorized traffic is segregating fast moving motor vehicles from cyclists. As a rule of thumb, it is suggested that if the motor vehicle traffic uh, speed is more than 30 km per hour, then physically segregating the bicycles through a bicycle path or reducing the speed of motor vehicle traffic to less than 30 km per hour is also an option. But in many cases, reducing the speed is uh, cumbersome than providing uh, a bicycle path. So providing a bicycle path is much preferred. And on streets where motor vehicle uh, speed is less than 30 km per hour, a bicycle lane can be used. And the reason is that from 30 km per hour onwards, the chances of severe damage and fatality to the cyclist increase. 
So higher the speed, the chance of fatality to a cyclist or a pedestrian are uh, increased. And cyclists also would feel more secure riding on a path or lane that are well lit. Having, a, having bicycle traffic signals could also increase the perception of safety as the motorized traffic will stop for bicycles. Similarly, and safety can also uh, be increased to the bicycle by providing sufficient parking facilities where the bicycles can be locked by the frame uh, so that uh, it reduces the chances of uh, the theft of the entire bicycle. Often bicycle parking involves parking only the front wheel. This provides the chance to lose the frame and one wheel, uh, which are more expensive. Bicycle frames tend to be more expensive than the wheels, so protecting the frame reduces the burden of loss to the user if a theft happens. Similarly, in some locations, manned bicycle parking facilities or bicycle lockers can provide uh, an increased sense of safety. Comfort is another gift that we can give cyclists. Comfort can come in many forms. In terms of infrastructure, comfort is in the material that is used for bicycle lanes and paths. In addition, uh, interruptions and delays on a cycle route reduces the comfort for cyclists. So these disruptions caused by blockages and unmaintained uh, infrastructure deter cycling. And other vehicles encroaching upon cycling infrastructure also reduces comfort and increases the risk of, uh, risk of a collision. When cyclists use a shared path, then it needs to be clear that even the other fast moving vehicles are just guests on shared spaces and all have the same level of priority. And this can be, for example, conveyed by drastically reducing the speed of motor vehicles through alternative uh, pavement options and uh, such that these cars uh, have uh, feedback when they're driving on shared spaces. Attraction to cycling is not only increased by providing the other elements that we have so far seen, but also by making cycling easy, relaxed and um, less uh, of a thought process than uh, the cyclist thinking of reaching the destination. A cyclist need not have to think on about the various obstacles that are on the on the route and the, the thought of uh, their journey being uh, being unattractive uh, should not be their uh, their initial fear when when they want to bicycle in a city. And Proper customer service, that is by hearing the complaints of the cyclists and, uh, and acting upon them, uh, make cyclists uh, feel that they are prioritized in the, in the transport situation in the city. And ensuring that the cycling route has a high interaction with the social surroundings can also make cycling attractive. Uh, what we mean by this is that the cyclists do not uh, feel alone or as if they are biking on a deserted path. So including uh, uh, this aspect in the planning and allowing cycle, uh, bicycle infrastructure, or bicycle paths or lanes to be embedded in the city uh, fabric uh, increases the social safety. When there are other people along the path, there is more social control and social safety, which increases uh, an appeal to uh, bicycle in the city.